military advisor, and now they're thinking of introducing it into all kinds of special forces units. It works best in places with lots of trees and grass, but it should blend in with dirt and mud, too. So, you're wearing woodland face paint. The woodland paint is most effective in forest environments. It'll work best if you use it when infiltrating forest areas. Pattern clothing, face paint, tactical movements. These are the elements of camouflage that will allow you to deceive your enemy. To camouflage yourself, first press the Start button to check out the Survival Viewer. Then select Camouflage, and you'll see two more options, Face and Uniform. Choose Face to apply face paint, and Uniform to change your field uniform. Simple, really. Make sure and choose something that'll match your surroundings. Your field uniform is not just a set of threads to wear. To get the max effect out of your camouflage, you gotta correspond with your environment. So no matter where you are, make sure to choose a camo pattern that lets you blend in. Covering your body is a good start, but a bare face will kill even the best camouflage. If the situation calls for a high camo index, you better break out the face paint. To apply face paint, select face from the camouflage menu in the survival viewer. Then choose a face paint that blends in with your surroundings. The camo index, located in the top right corner of the screen, tells you if your outfit is getting the job done. The higher the value of this index, the harder it is for the enemy to spot you. Try your best to keep the camo index as high as possible. I heard you fought against KGB troops in the Virtuous Mission, but this time you're up against Spetsnaz. Spetsnaz is the Special Forces Unit of GRU, the intelligence wing of the Soviet Defense Ministry's General Staff Office. Spetsnaz troops undergo rigorous training in all types of special ops, from assassination and demolition to intelligence gathering. That and Volgan's loaded, man. His unit is one of the best equipped in the entire Soviet Union, if not the best. I heard the enemies you encountered in the Virtuous Mission were only carrying weapons like AKs and grenades. Well, it ain't that simple anymore. In addition to AKs, some of the patrols you'll encounter might be equipped with Scorpion submachine guns and shotguns. The Scorpion is even lighter than the AK, making it much easier to handle. Basically, a guy with a Scorpion is not going to miss you as often as with an AK. The shotgun is a powerful weapon. One blast is enough to floor you and you're likely to be seriously wounded. Watch for that, man. So you've got your uniform and your face paint, but that alone isn't enough to make for good camouflage. Camouflage means blending in Paramedic. Snake, it's so good to hear from you again. Same here. It's been a week, hasn't it? Four days, actually. Huh? I visited you in the hospital. You were still unconscious, though. Ah, then you must have seen me naked. Yeah, but you were all wrapped up in bandages and tubes, so I couldn't do anything but look. Better luck next time. Mm, let's hope so. But seriously, don't forget that you were like that until just yesterday. In fact, you really shouldn't even be on this mission. Keep an eye on your stamina gauge. If you start to run low, don't push yourself. Eat something to replenish your stamina. And try not to get yourself hurt. If you're wounded or get bitten by a venomous animal, go into the survival viewer immediately and treat yourself using cure. Yeah, yeah. I can see you still know how to nag. You're welcome. And I can see you still don't know when to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Maybe so. By the way, I heard you're going to lose your medical license if this mission fails. Yes, there was talk of that, but the mission won't fail, will it? Of course not. Good. I believe in you. But you know what? I really don't care about my medical license. Didn't they use that to force you to participate in this operation? No, I volunteered. Why? So that I could watch over you. Huh. Snake, you're the best agent I've ever seen. But you push yourself too hard. You're reckless. Someone has to stop you from getting into trouble. To make sure you and the boss don't kill each other. Mm -hmm. So that's why I volunteered. 
I mean, you couldn't ask for a better guardian angel than me, right? Thanks. Stop right there. Huh? You can thank me when you get back. All right. Snake, unlike the virtuous mission, this is a night operation. You'll be encountering nocturnal animals that you didn't encounter your last mission. Some of them are venomous, like the King Cobra, so be careful. If you get bitten by a venomous animal, the poison will spread through your body and rapidly drain your life gauge. If that's the case, go into the cure screen and survival viewer immediately and inject yourself with serum. Got it? Snake, that's the home to the Otten frog. The Otten frog is a large, corpulent species of frog. They're known as a delicacy, so it might be worth catching them for food. The Otten frog was originally found only on Amami Oshima in Japan. Frogs usually have four toes on their front legs, but the Otten frog is unique in that it has five. Got it. By the way, you said they were known as a delicacy, right? Right. So that means they must taste pretty good, huh? I guess so. I hear that in Japan, Otten frog sashimi and sukiyaki are popular dishes. Really? Yeah. Japan, huh? That place is starting to sound better and better. Snake, that area is inhabited by the Japanese flying squirrel. Japanese flying squirrels are non-venomous, and they shouldn't attack you. The head, front legs, hind legs, and tail of the Japanese flying squirrel are connected by a membrane of skin, which allows the squirrel to glide from tree to tree. It says here that if it catches a good wind, it can fly more than a hundred yards. Sounds like it's going to be tough to catch one. So, aren't you going to ask me? You know it. How does it taste? Not sure. Not sure? The guy doesn't say anything about it. Why not? Gee, maybe it's because no one would ever think of eating a flying squirrel. Then I must be the first one. <sighs> maybe you are. The gauge below your life gauge is your stamina gauge. It shows, as the name suggests, your remaining stamina. As you consume stamina... Snake, unlike the virtuous mission, this is a night... Snake, your first task is to meet up with Adam, the contact provided by the KGB. The rendezvous point is the abandoned factory to the north of your current position. Head north. The abandoned factory. That's where I met Sokolov during the virtuous mission. Correct, but we can't afford to have the same thing happen this time. I know. Like the Virtuous mission, Operation Snake Eater is a solo sneaking mission. There are no units in the field to back you up. Avoid engaging the enemy whenever possible. Your first priority is to remain unseen. Use the Camouflage option in the Survival Viewer and choose your camouflage wisely. Proceed with caution. Unlike the Virtuous mission, this is a night operation. You'll get lost more easily in the dark, but it'll also make your camouflage more effective and make it harder for the enemy to see you. On the other hand, it will also be more difficult for you to see them. You'll also find that different animals are active. Some of these nocturnal animals are poisonous, so stay alert. Paramedic is with us again to provide information on the local plants and animals. Give her a call if there's anything you need to know. Operation Snake Eater is different from the Virtuous mission in that you won't be able to complete it in just a few hours. The time limit set by Khrushchev is one week. Within that time, you'll have to rescue Sokolov, defeat Volgin, destroy the Shagohod, and... I know. Good. In any event, you'll not be allowed to return until you've accomplished your objectives. Survival in the field will be critical in this mission, and the most important survival technique of all is, of course, finding food. You can get food in the same way you did during the Virtuous mission, by capturing it. The enemy presence in that area is still light. You should try and get as much food as possible while you can. Thanks to last week's nuclear incident, the Soviet Union is now on secondary alert. We're one step away from a nuclear war. DEFCON 2, huh? In American parlance, yes. 
From what Western intelligence has been able to gather, the radical elements in the Soviet command are showing signs of impatience. They say we're on the brink of World War III here. And with Khrushchev's position getting weaker every day, I worry whether he'll be able to hold them back. One week. Yes. America must eliminate the boss by its own hand to prove its innocence. There is no other way to resolve the crisis. Everything rests on your shoulders, Snake. Failure is not an option. I know. Major, what should I do with this wreck of a drone? Just leave it there. Are you sure? Yes. But isn't this thing top secret? Yes, it is. After the U-2 spy plane incident four years ago, plans were laid out for future spy missions in Soviet airspace to be carried out by an unmanned craft. That craft was the D-21 spy drone, the basis of the one you came in on. The D-21 is launched from a craft called the M-21. The M-21 itself is a derivative of the A-12, a supersonic long-range spy plane currently being developed as the successor to the U-2. However, for this mission, we used a modified YF-12A, a long-range interceptor version of the A-12. After being released from the mothership, the drone can achieve speeds upwards of Mark III at high altitude using its ramjet engine. It can't be shot down by ground-to-air missiles, and it's nearly undetectable by radar. With Selenoyarsk in such a high state of alert after our last escapade, this was the only reliable way to get you in. This is all top-secret military technology. Are you telling me I'm supposed to just leave it here? That's right. Why? The purpose of Operation Snake Eater is to send an American agent into the field in order to eliminate a defector and traitor, namely the boss. Part of that mission involves making sure the Soviets find out what we're doing. So we have to leave behind some kind of evidence that the US was involved. Don't worry. The technologically sensitive components of the craft were rigged to self-destruct when it landed. The only thing the Soviets are going to find is a pile of American-made scrap metal. Got it. Just one thing, though. What is it? I think they'd better redesign the landing impact buffer. People are going to get hurt landing that thing. I'll let them know. Major, I appreciate you allowing me to use weapons, but shouldn't I be carrying some rubles? You mean fake currency? Right. Snake, do you remember the Francis Gary Powers incident back in 1960? Powers was flying a U-2 on a spy mission for the CIA in Soviet airspace. He was shot down and taken prisoner. His confession brought to light the fact that the CIA was spying in Soviet airspace. As a result, the US-Soviet summit scheduled for two weeks later was cancelled. Yeah, I remember. U-2 pilots are required to carry items that mask their identity. Powers was carrying ruble, mark and lira coins, as well as French gold coins. He was also carrying two gold watches and seven women's rings. All of these objects were meant to conceal his national origins. But for this mission, we've got to demonstrate to the Khrushchev regime that America is involved. There's no need to conceal your origins. And besides, all you need to do is complete your mission. As long as you're not captured or killed, the details will take care of themselves. Okay. The Soviet intelligence community must be up in arms about the boss's defection. The great Voyevoda has abandoned America and embraced the Soviet Union. Voyevoda? Apparently, that's what they call the boss behind the Iron Curtain. It means warrior or mighty soldier in Russian. When used to refer to a woman, it means something close to Lady Knight. In Russia, where well, they've had a number of female emperors throughout their history. It's a term of great respect. Well, poetic in a way. The boss's exploits have made her name famous in the East as well. Major, why did the boss defect? I don't know, but I will tell you this. America is all too eager to get rid of her. What do you mean? She knows too many of our secrets. If she were to relay all the top secret information she knows to the Soviet bloc, it would put us at a severe disadvantage. It might even lead to the downfall of the West. Even if we survive, the boss is still too much of a hero to us. With her in the Soviet camp, we'd suffer a fatal loss of morale at home. There are even whispers that some of the less stalwart elements of the military might follow her example and defect themselves. 
I assume you're aware that since your last mission, several key figures within the CIA have 